All right, this is my 17 foot Sea Hunt center console I bought about two years ago <clears throat> on an easy loader trailer for a 17 to 19 foot boat. There's several spots in this trailer that you need to look out for if you happen to buy a boat that has an easy loader trailer of this uh, similar age group. It's the old uh, boxed galvanized steel. Um, the newer trailers from about 2004, 2005 up uh, are the aluminum I-beam design, which is supersedes this uh, in many ways. But uh, anyways, I'm working on it today. just wanted to point out a few things, that issue areas I've had since I bought it. These main beams that run through here, I had to replace both of them. Uh, the bottom end from years of using it in salt water, this trailer has been in salt water most of its life, uh, except for the last year or so. Um, they tend to rot out from the bottom up, right where that hole is, that drain hole. So it's best to go ahead and when you, you're uh, hosing these trailers down after you use them in salt water, to go ahead and stick the hose right up under here. You'll find the opening for that beam and just stick the head, head of the hose in either end and let it wash all the salt water out. I've done that since I replaced them. I haven't had any rust show up at all. So now I'm working on the end here. So I've taken the tongue off the trailer. I've got some severe rust through here. I had originally intended to just go through and um, you know, wire brush all this stuff off, put new bolts in it and everything. But when I got out here and got everything apart and looked at it, I discovered that the structural integrity is completely gone. I mean, I had a screwdriver went through both ends of these things. And it looks like the rust damage goes back about four inches at the worst part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna you know, cut the ends off these on either end with a Sawzall. And I'm gonna come back through because this trailer is designed to, you know, the tongue sits between the wishbones here. And all this here is an angle iron on the bottom and the front, angle iron in the back. And there's a steel plate that goes on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these off, replace the angle iron on the bottom on either end. I'd have to obviously have to drill new holes in the trailer in the top and bottom. And I'm gonna put three eighths inch thick uh, flat steel uh, on top on both the forward and or rear end of where it's gonna mount up. The tongue's gonna mount through it. And I'm gonna put three eighths inch uh, angle iron on the front and back on the bottom end. And then I'm gonna try to fit this uh, piece that came with the trailer from the factory back on top of it all. I'm not sure how it's going to fit once I make my cuts, but we'll see. I might have to modify that a little bit. But that's an area you want to keep an eye on, especially if you if you notice rust on there, just take a look at it, inspect it, because this is where all the weight of the boat, motor, everything, where it connects to the back of the vehicle, vehicle is. If this goes, if you lose integrity here, uh, your boat will come free from the tongue and, and go ghost riding down the street more than likely it's just going to fall right on the street and it's going to damage the trailer the boat possibly other vehicles your vehicle so always want to take a look at that i've i've this trailer like i said is about it's a 99 so it's 17 or so years old um and it needed to have this done but once i get this done this trailer will be pretty much tip top for another 10 years or so um probably won't own the boat that long but uh i'll uh show you guys step by step how I do this I, and taking the tongues off pretty self-explanatory all I had to do is cut the bolts with the saws on and, and uh, cut the wiring and uh, and move it off so I'm gonna show you all how I did this and just for instructional purposes and uh, we're gonna see if we can get this thing put back together and, and strong again so I can tow it this summer get back there in just a minute all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a, uh, my saws all here I'm going to cut the ends off. I've already measured back about four inches on either end. Used a straight edge square to make my lines. And I'm going to hack these bad ends off. And you can just you can see how bad it is. You know, it's there's holes. The metal's integrity is just gone on both ends. So the sun's there. But I'm going to get these cut off and we're going to start, start fresh. I'll give you a shot when, uh, when we get them cut off. All right, so I got the end pieces cut off. As you can see, the metal here on the bottom is a lot better. It's, it's thicker. Um, it's not as thick as it was when it came out of the factory, but I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. Um, what I'll probably do is come back through and just, um, once I get everything fitted up, I'll probably take my wire feed welder and build up a weld on the bottom there. Um, 
but uh, so far it's coming along all right get back with you I wanted to kind of show you all what I'm planning to do. Um, this is basically the setup that was on there before. Obviously, you have to cut your miters so they match up with the wishbone shape on either end. But I am going to use a 3 8 thick uh, flat bar. It's extremely strong. You can pick it up at Lowe's or Home Depot for about $22 a piece. Um, so I'm going to put that. You know, it's probably overkill because the stuff that came off of here is, is quarter inch thick. But I, I want it to be strong and I want it to last a long time. So basically what I'm going to have is... The, the 3 8 go on top and both the front and rear and then I'm going to have this quarter inch thick angle iron to bolt through the bottom and then the tongue of the trailer is going to mount in between that so it'll basically be the exact same setup I had before and I'm also going to come through and spray the inside of the trailer with a rust reformer from Rust-Oleum this will chemically bond to the existing rust and change it to uh, an, an iron um, makes it a lot stronger and will stop the rust. And then I'm going to come through with the Rust-Oleum automotive primer and just kind of finish everything out once it's all bed, uh, all put together. Uh, I'm going to spray the rust reformer on the existing metal, the new metal. Everything's going to get sprayed before I fit everything together with nuts and bolts. And I'm going to come through with a final, final spray once everything's put together. And that's basically going to be it. I'm going to drill some holes, cut some metal here, and uh, get everything shaped up. And then I'll... Uh, show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. I'm going to have to redo some wiring and stuff. I had to clip the wires to get the tongue off the trailer. Um, one thing you kind of need to watch out for, I've, I had the trailer resting on these center blocks on either end. There's a lot of weight on that tongue. You know, it, it weighs a good bit and it balances this thing out when it's connected. So when I took it off, I had was being stupid really wasn't thinking of what I was doing and as soon as I took the weight off the trailer all the weight shifted to where the motor is on the back and so I, what I ended up having to do is just ease it down on the ground and let the motor take the weight um, of the boat I know it's not super good for it but I have you know right now I don't have a choice so, so I'm gonna get some metal cut we're gonna get some stuff sprayed bolted and drill those holes, drill some holes and uh, get you guys out on here and show you how, how it worked out when I got all finished up all right, so I'm looking at everything and doing the metal fit up. And the bracket, I want this to be on here. Bear with me just a second. Okay, that's what it looks like. That came from the factory. So I'm going to obviously paint all this stuff to match, but I'm going to use the existing holes that are in the front already. These are not going to be used except for the holes for the tongue in the middle. But I've got a little gap down here from where I cut the end off. This this obviously went all the way up to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pieces that I cut off. I'm going to measure them. And I'm going to tack weld them up. I'm going to cut this out and tack weld a tab on the back side of here. So this will sit in here and I'll fill this with weld. There's no support here. I'm not going to use these bolt holes. Uh, this is just to make it look all even and nice. And then for the tongue, since I have to pull the tongue back, pull it, extend it back further on the trailer because I'm going to have my 3 8 plate bolted back here, further back where I've got good metal. And I had measured, because the tongue would butt up to the inside of this thing here. So I went and had measured to remove that in the back so the tongue would slide out the back of this cover here and bolt up to my bracket, my 3 8 bracket, bracket and angle iron I'm going to put back here. And I may, you know, bolt a spare tire. I actually might just use these holes to bolt my spare tire on or something that'll kind of cover all this up and make it look neat, <clears throat> nice and neat. But right now I'm going to go ahead and cut that tab out of there. I'm probably going to go ahead and cut these so that I can weld them up in there with the tack weld or something. And I'm going to go ahead and make my measurements for my plate steel it's going to go in the back here on the bottom and top make those cuts so that they're you know even with the sides of the the channel here on the tire on the uh, trailer and I'm gonna paint everything a gray color to match kind of this galvanized I'm eventually gonna paint this whole trailer you know probably white or uh, you know another color maybe galvanize it again try to get a galvanized spray can or something um, but this is basically what it's going to look like. I'll we'll have the angle iron on the bottom, both in the front and the rear. 3-8 steel on the back. 
plus that plate there and it should give it plenty of strength to pull the boat um, and then the tongue will bolt to here and here to the top and bottom and after that it's just a matter of painting and getting those brackets put in so it you know it looks right um, went ahead and cleaned up the tongue had some rust on it and had sanded it down with a wire wheel on a, on a drill and uh, put the rust reformer on there and wait for it to dry now and I'm going to spray paint those a gray color with the gray primer as well all right so next thing I'm going to do is since I know this is where we want this is I'm going to make my measurements with this based on where the tongue you know once I get the tongue put up here where I want it Whoa, this actually might be closer up here like this anyways I'm gonna measure this and cut it so we know where that's gonna go and I'm gonna cut my angle iron next <clears throat> all right so what I did was I measured this once I had it in place so I know that where I want this this to be I measured from here back four and a half inches and struck a line on either side so that it'll be equidistant from here on both sides and then I took my marker and went up underneath and just struck a line parallel with the wishbone of the trailer on both ends so I know where to cut my bevel at. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that cut and fit it up again see how it looks. All right, so I'm gonna <clears throat> drill my holes in the plate steel. So I, I kind of eyeballed it. I want it to be center on the, the beam of the trailer also with center on this, uh, this bracket here. I did that on both sides. And what I'm gonna do is once I get these two holes drilled, I'll then come back and lay this between the two lines that I marked and stick the pin down into the hole and mark the trailer where I want that, that to be drilled at. And then um, I'll do the same for the bottom. I'll probably just, what I'll do is just snap a line with a chalk box, you know, straight down because obviously you have to take into account the geometry of, of the angle that the trailer's tilted back at right now and, and all that stuff. All right, so we got our 3 8 flat bar that's gonna go on the top rear section cut to fit on both ends. I'll probably have to sand this down so I don't have a sharp edge on it. But I'll, uh, I'll hit it with a wire wheel and some a grinder or something and round it out. All right, so now we're going to get our angle iron put in on the bottom. We're going to get it cut from the bottom. I'm going to use the existing piece that was already on the trailer. It's in, still in really good shape. It's not really. It's just got some surface rust on it. But it's going to go down here on the bottom that so we'll have one in the back and one in the bottom and it should uh, should work out nice all right so I've made my cut my notch in my plate for my tongue my trailer tongue so the tongue's gonna be bolted here these two bolts here are gonna be empty holes the next one's gonna be bolted through here the tongue will slide through the notch that I cut and it'll be bolted through the middle of this 3 8 um, plate steel very thick stuff uh, for steel for a trailer. I mean everything on this trailer is a quarter inch So it's kind of overkill, but I want it to be strong So next we're gonna cut the angle iron. It's quarter inch angle iron That's gonna go on the bottom of here, and then I'm gonna have another piece. that's gonna go go right here and then um, I'm gonna have everything bolted up with let's see here, Seven inch uh, all threaded uh, hex head half inch bolts. So they're gonna go through here, through here, through here, and it'll be one that goes through, you know, through the the trailer where the plate is. And I'm gonna put washers on the top of all this stuff, and then uh, I'm actually gonna take my welder and, in addition to putting Loctite on all these, because I couldn't find a nylock nut, which is what you want. Um, Home Depot didn't have what I needed, but I'm going to put a little tack weld on the bottom of each side of one of these nuts once I get it torqued down, and that way the nut won't back off. Um, so I'll Loctite it and then do a tack weld, tack weld, and it, it shouldn't move. But I'll have to occasionally check to make sure the welds are still good. But she's coming together, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Get back with you. All right, got my holes drilled through the trailer frame. I test fitted this up. Everything looks good. 
I uh, bought, I realized once I did this, I bought bolts that were way too long. So I'm going to probably just, once I torque them down and then put the nut where I need it, I'm going to go ahead and cut the bolt off and bolt end off with the, with the saws off. Cause it's a, about a 30 minute trip to Home Depot for him, man. I'm not, I'm not going over there spending an hour, hour and some change, uh, swap bolts. So these will work. All right. So we're going to get the tongue placed up in here and we're going to get it bolted up through the back and then I'm going to try to, uh, get it staged up where it's tight with a or come along or a strap or something on the front and then we're going to drill a hole here for this bolt hole and one for that bolt hole and then we're going to uh, get the tongue ma mounted up and we'll uh then we'll be on to the next step all right i took a come along hooked it up to the eye on the uh, bow of the trailer right through the front of the tongue and i ran a bolt through the middle of the back here Put a nut on it so it won't go anywhere and just kind of keep everything loose but <clears throat> y'all see where i'm getting here with this this uh i went ahead also and i i went ahead and primed this with rust stuff so it's gonna be ready to go um once i, I don't have to pull back off i can just go ahead and paint it but i'm gonna get this thing all tightened up get this all short up in the back and tightened up and not torqued down but tightened up enough to get where i can drill a hole in here and put a bolt through here and then also through here so We'll have the tongue bolted in one, two, three places, and then we'll have one, two, three, four on the frame, just like it was when it came from the factory, except it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little, uh, this is all, really all we did was this extends out a little longer because I cut this off, and the tongue is going to be pushed back just about uh, six inches or so. So I had to take the winch off to just to get where I could maneuver it by myself, but also because the winch didn't have much clearance when I first tried to put it on here between where this plate originally was and the fact that I had to move it back. So um, I'm going to have to adjust the winch so it'll be further up on the tongue of the trailer and uh, be proper alignment with the, the, the bow of the boat. So I'm going to get all this stuff test fit up and uh, get the holes drilled next. And once I get those bolts back in and everything tested, I'm going to uh, start running the video again for y'all. And I'm going to get everything torqued down and then I'm going to uh, put this down on the ground. And I'm actually going to get on this thing and try to jump around a little bit, put some weight on it, and see how it fits and see how it does because I don't want this thing coming apart at all when I'm on the road. So I'll uh, do these. I'm going to drill the holes and then torque everything down, get it all placed up where it needs to be, and then uh, we'll do a test on it and then uh, do some little cosmetic work, uh, paint, and then I want to try to get some pieces in here to fill this gap. Uh, and I need to also tack weld the nuts. So. We're getting there though, but this is overall, this is this is the rebuild on the easy loader trailer. Alright, so I got the first angle bracket in on the bottom, right there, for the top of this uh, plate. And I'm going to make my measurement, which I've already done, for the bottom rear angle iron bracket. I've made my bevel measurements, I just need to make a uh, straight edge on the back here. Um, and I'm going to cut those with a sawzall and fit it up. And drill, I also need to drill holes in it as well. So i got to measure those out. Alright, so i got everything <coughs> torqued down on here. Um, I'm putting the uh, winch back on right now. Everything kind of went back together real well. Um, I did have to drill a new hole right here for this. This hole, for some reason, it, it, nothing worked right. So I, I drilled a new hole a little further up on here for this plate. But I've got seven bolts now holding everything together instead of six like it came from the factory. So it should be a heck of a lot stronger. So I'm going to finish hooking this winch up. I'm going to go ahead and hook it to the back of the Forerunner and pull it around the block a couple times to see how it does. And then we'll go through and take a look at all the bolts. Before I do that, though, I need to actually I need to go back through here and get my wire from the welder out and tack these, um, tack these bolts, the nuts to the uh, bolts, make sure they don't back out. So I'm going to do that and paint everything, and that's going to be it. So if you guys have any questions or anything, um, let me know. Um, I do all kinds of different projects, so subscribe to my channel if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Um, and I'll be doing some other stuff. I'm going to repaint this Johnson boat motor here. I'm going to do a video on that uh, probably here in another month or so. Um, on the back, it's a 115 two-stroke Johnson. But I'm going to do a little follow-up video once I get everything painted, tacked down, and uh, I'll do another video later on letting y'all know how it came out as far as uh, 
couple months of getting it in and out of the water and down the road and stuff. So, thanks for watching. All right, so everything's together. I have tack welded the nuts in place so they're not gonna back out. I'll check those periodically just to make sure I don't need to re-weld them or maybe something, do something else with them. But uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna slap some gray paint on this. Uh, the black stuff is just for where I uh, was covering up some rust stuff. So um, get one more shot of this before I close this video out of uh, of how it looks after it's painted. <laughs> All right, so I got everything primed gray. I actually went ahead, I had one can of paint did the, the whole trailer on both sides, so um, everything's primed up, and right now I'm gonna get the key to the lock, and I'm gonna hook it up to the back of the truck, and go ahead and pull it around the block several times just to take a good look and see how everything's working out. But, to show you here, I grab the handle. I'm shaking on it pretty good, and it's not moving. So, I'm assuming everything is going to be kosher with it. So, anyways, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and I'll update y'all later. Thanks for watching.